Hello there, Maverick traders. This is Imri, and welcome to today's Currency Recap. It is Thursday, June 8th. All right, so the headline for today is that jobless claims have soared. I believe that they're at their highest since they've been since October 2021, which is potentially showing a softening labor market. The reason the market's taking this as good news is because, at least the narrative right now, never mind what this says about the broader economy, but the narrative right now uh, means that this might pressure the Fed into, if not uh, lowering rates, at least staying put. So equities did well today. Cryptos bouncing back a little bit. Gold up on the day. Oil down big. Uh, I, I do believe there's potential for a, a bottom forming here in Bitcoin, and we're going to take a look at that a little bit later. And as far as the dollar is concerned, I think its underperformance may extend for at least a little bit longer. Okay, taking a look at the S&P 500, we're reaching my first target as we've now confirmed this breakout of this inverse head and shoulders. I'm still bearish in the big picture, but uh, let's take it as uh, an Elliott Wave analyst would say, which is exactly what I am. Let's take it one wave at a time. And right now, the near term tells me to be bullish. Uh, so I, I think we're targeting 43.22. We'll ideally hit that before next week's Fed meeting. We're very close to that level right now. Uh, potentially hit that, if, if not an overnight trading in the futures market, you know, potentially hit that in the cash market tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to probably get a, a bit of a bigger pullback, perhaps down to 4150, 4100, followed by one more push higher. And then I'd say, look out, uh, there's probably a big top on the horizon. So immediate term, slightly bullish. 10-year yields are due for a come, come off right now. I think they're going to pull back. Uh, there's support in that 3.5% to 3.4% 3, uh, range. So, I mean, in percentage terms, that's going to be a big move for the yield. So I, I think that it's entirely reasonable to, to look for the yield to soften here. And in terms of crypto, so this is the basket. This isn't just Bitcoin, of course, um, but we're still trading within this descending channel and that really big bull candle from a couple days ago uh, tells me that we might be close to a, a bottom here in the crypto market, which could be really exciting. I think the next run in Bitcoin is going to send that crypto to uh, 34, 35,000 at least. So I'm gearing up for that personally. I don't think it's quite time yet, but the signs, the initial signs at least are promising. Uh, so sticking with a plus three for the market outlook here, we're still above both moving averages and the slope is positive. Not much more to say about that. In terms of news, tomorrow we're going to have employment data come out of uh, the Canadian economy. It'll be interesting to see what that data says, especially as the Bank of Canada delivered a surprise rate hike earlier this week on Wednesday. Uh, so that'll be, I think, a big market mover for the Canadian dollar potentially. In terms of currency analysis now, things are interesting. Um, on a percentage basis, nothing to write home about today in crypto, especially relative to the big moves that we've seen recently. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin when we dive into trading view. But otherwise, I'd say today, at least, the market's been quite tame. Not so on the fiat side. After a day of dollar outperformance the other day, today we have dollar underperformance. Um, and, and we have commodity currencies making a bit of a comeback here, which is which is interesting. That is, of course, with the exception of the Canadian dollar. So the Canadian dollar and U.S. dollar kind of lumped together at the moment. Uh, but the Aussie and Kiwi dollars outperformed. Swiss franc was the surprise, I think, uh, today for, for most people. In terms of velocity, some pretty obvious divergences here on, on the between the negative and, and positive scores. Um, I mean, the pound and the Swiss franc plus three, um, Canadian dollar and US dollar, negative, th uh, negative three and negative two, everything else kind of in the middle. Uh, so we're going to take a look at charts right now and, and I'll just show you, you know, what this all means and put that into context. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with the yen. Now you'll notice this pattern here, which really started to form back in April 2022, this long descending wedge, which we broke out of sharply to the upside. Well, we're kind of getting a mini version of that same pattern right now. I don't expect this wedge to be as uh, explosive as, as the one that, that broke out uh, in, in late November 2022. Uh, 
Um, but I, I think the downside in the yen here is somewhat limited. We might bounce off the top of this resistance line one more time, have one more move lower, and then we could get a larger pop higher. I think that would be pretty exciting. So I think there is runway here to continue being short yen, uh, which means basically being long the yen crosses, but I think that runway is is getting uh, is, is shrinking rapidly. All right, so that tells me that there might be some risk off volatility in the near in the relatively near term, and that coincides with my view on the stock market, where I think near term we do get a pop higher, uh, and we should be on the lookout for a, a pretty solid tradable top in in the near future. Uh, okay, moving on to the U.S. dollar, so. We basically did exactly what I thought we would do last week, which is trade sideways, then come up and test this resistance area, and we've since pulled back. Does this mean that we're just gonna come crashing off to make new lows in the US dollar? I, I don't think so. I think we still have higher to go here in the dollar. I think there's one more push to come. And I, I think that's, I, I mean, I'm looking for a measured move here. Is, is it impossible that, that this double top is just gonna lead to new lows in the dollar basket? It's not impossible at all. I'm just saying, typically speaking, when I see a formation like this, it leads me to expect a, uh, a measured move, which, which means basically that this move that we've had from the 2nd of February to March 8th, you know, that traveled 6.27% uh, or 73 points in this basket. I'm looking for that same move from the lows from May 10th, which would take us to 126 in this currency basket. That doesn't mean it absolutely has to happen. I'm just saying based on my own research and study, that is the more common scenario, you know, that we can typically expect. All right. So what I would do in a case like this is draw a corrective trend channel like this, and I'd be looking for this move to bottom out. That being said, like uh, the, the velocity score is definitely negative for the U.S. dollar, but we're getting extremely oversold here on the shorter term timeframes. So the one hour um, and the four hour still has a little bit of room, but I, I don't know how much legs this dollar move has to go. I suspect that tomorrow could also be a soft day for the dollar, but as we head into next week with, uh, with the Fed meeting on Wednesday, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. In terms of FIB retracements, you know, we've almost done 50% here. I, I think the 61.8% is a very reasonable target. And if I'm looking for a measured move, for uh, the sequence that, that I'm targeting, you'll see that that measured move measurement uh, comes in and coincides very nicely with that 61.8% retracement. Okay, so I, I think that's I think that's a really reasonable target here, which means if you're pretty aggressive, there is room to continue shorting the dollar. It's not my trade personally. I, I still expect dollar strength for one more significant push higher, and I'm gonna wait for that setup to materialize. Moving on to the Swiss franc, uh, so we broke that trend line that I pointed out uh, last week and well, we've come down exactly to that support level that I've also outlined and we're now bouncing. I'm not extremely bullish the Swiss franc, nor am I extremely bearish, I'm somewhat neutral here. And you can see we have the trend lines of this contracting triangle in play. Now, tr contracting triangles tend to be trend continuation patterns. So, so long as we're trading within the boundaries of this triangle, uh, it's likely we're going to see some whipsaw. So we could go up, we could go down, we could go up, we could go down, and eventually we have to break out one way or the other. My bias would be to the upside just due to the structure of this pattern. Uh, what would change my mind? If we break and close decisively below uh, 135.13, which is this red level I've outlined there. Okay, Euro, similar position. We tagged resistance uh, towards the end of May drifted down into support, and we're just kind of chilling in no man's land. This really makes the euro an uninteresting proposition for me. I'd really want to see us uh, stay above this support level, keep our heads above water, so to speak, or break decisively lower. Uh, so yeah, in my view, euro is kind of in no man's land. It's just not all that interesting to me at the moment. Okay, British pound. So uh, we've bounced off this trend line. As you can see here, you know, I've uh, drawn attention to this trend line in the past and we tagged this resistance level, looks like just literally by a pip before coming off. I don't think I'm going to really, I, I don't really see reason to be bearish the pound until we decisively take out this trend line. Okay, we've redrawn the trend line once. I think this is the trend line we're working with right now. Market seems to be respecting it. So we've got to wait to see what happens, but 
Uh, if we can clear this gray resistance area, then we'd be looking, geez, at, at, at a move potentially much, you know, much higher. This is really the next wide area of resistance that I can see, which would take us back to where the pound was trading in 2016. That's pretty epic considering we made new all-time lows in the pound uh, across many, many currency pairs back in September 2022. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to get us too ahead of ourselves. We have traded into this very significant resistance zone. Um, if the right setup materializes, I wouldn't mind buying the pound back in that zone, but I don't think there's a lot of room for that trade to run. Okay, next up we have the Canadian dollar. So uh, we broke out of this head and shoulders pattern and I'm just going to be showing you that neckline measurement once again. So we still have some ways to go before we reach that neckline, but today, uh, switching the candlestick chart for a moment, look at this engulfing candlestick right here. That's pretty scary looking. Um, is it possible for us to draw a trend line off these lows? Yeah, so we're right on the trend line support right now. If we take out that trend line, it's very possible we get a much steeper pullback in, uh, in the Canadian dollar coming back to these moving averages, which would take us back to where we were on May, I'd say between May 18th to May 24th, right? So Canadian dollar could be a good short if we break below the support line. Aussie dollar, I said I don't want to turn bullish despite my, you know, my personal bias on, on the currency. Uh, which was leaning bullish until we reclaim this resistance area. Well, we're just kind of above it right now. I'd like to see us decisively pop here, go sideways, base ideally, and then that would give the uh, ideal long setup in my opinion. So a little bit more patience is required for the Aussie dollar. And then finally, the Kiwi dollar is just clinging on to support here. Uh, momentum doesn't really tell me too much. There's no particular bullish momentum signature here or bearish momentum signature. So. I'm inclined to wait and, and let the Kiwi dollar do its thing. If, if you're asking for my hunch, I think we'll bounce back to these moving averages and then trade lower. But I, you know, that's definitely looking a, a couple bends around the couple bends around the corner. Geez, I'm mixing metaphors terribly here. Uh, it's something I, I usually tease Ankit about. But anyway, so I, I do think we we might bounce and, and test these moving averages and then come off. That's what my Elliott Wave analysis tells me. But like I said, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So right now I'll say I'm fairly neutral on the Kiwi with a slight bullish bias. And all right, traders, that's it. That covers currency analysis for today. So in conclusion, uh, the yen remains weak in the face of risk on appetite, but I, I can see that changing in, in the relatively near term. Um, and when there's volatility, there's a lot of volatility. And then other days, the market's very quiet. So as a result, always focus on proper position sizing. And you can bet you the dollar is going to be in focus next week as we head into uh, Fed Day on Wednesday. All right, that's it for me, traders. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you later.